Welcome to the final part of lecture one. We've already looked at the stress tensor and the rate of strain tensor, and we've seen how they both obey the property of symmetry. Now what we're going to do is just see how we add them together to form a stress balance. This is an essential part of forming force and momentum balances for a fluid flow. Now, if we think about the overall state of stress within a fluid, it has a number of contributions. You've got stresses around the surface, surface stresses such as hydrostatic pressure. That's an example of a static stress. You've also got dynamic stresses such as those due to the rate of strain, mu du dy, back to our 1D fluids. If we depart from the Newtonian world and look at the viscoelastic world, we can also have things such as stored stress, um, which is due to the deformation history of a material. We're not going to worry about that just now. We will worry about it in section B of this course. So if we think of assembling a stress balance, we've got some rules that we need to obey. Rule number one, everything that adds together has to be dimensionally consistent. This is, of course, a no-brainer dimensional homogeneity is an underpinning of forming any equation. Rule number two, everything that is added together has to be consistent in rank. Now what I mean by rank is tensor rank. A scalar, pressure for example, is just one number. It's a rank zero tensor. Velocity, it's a vector. It has three components in each of the coordinate directions. It's a rank 1 tensor, so a rank 1 tensor is a vector, a rank 0 tensor is a scalar. Stress is what we've been loosely calling a tensor all along. It has nine pieces of information, a 3x3 three three matrix, of which only six are independent. This is what we term a second rank tensor. So if everything that adds together has to be rank consistent, we can't add a zero rank tensor to a second rank tensor to a first rank tensor. We can't add scalars to tensors of second rank to vectors. So rank consistency is rule number two. Rule number three, it's back to symmetry. We've defined the stress tensor to be symmetric. Anything that adds to it has to maintain symmetry. So, let's see how we do this, and let's see how we can form a stress balance. So, I'm going to define an overall stress, sigma. Sigma is what I'm calling my total stress. It's all the stresses added together, regardless of whether they're dynamic or whether they're static. So, sigma, the total stress, has a contribution from the hydrostatic pressure, scalar p. So we need to see how we manipulate p to give it the right rank to add into a stress. Our total stress sigma also has contribution from the shear stress tensor tau that we've been looking at in a great deal of depth so far. So let's remember our three rules. Rule number one, dimensional homogeneity. Pressure, newtons per square meter. Stress, newtons per square meter. So from a dimensional standpoint, adding pressures to stresses is just fine. So we're happy with that. Let's think about rule number two. Rule number two was rank homogeneity. So remember that we can't add together tensors of different rank. Now on the blackboard, sigma second rank tensor, total stress. Italic P, it's a scalar, it's a rank zero tensor. Tau, bold, non-italic, this is another second rank tensor. So this summation here is completely invalid because we have not obeyed rank homogeneity. Let's see how we can actually make that scalar P tensor. Written out now are the changes that we've made in yellow. Notice for a start I've put a minus sign in front of the P because pressure forms a compressive stress. It's not, an, it's not a putting a fluid element in tension, it's putting it in compression. Hence, with our sign convention that we learnt in the first part of this lecture, we need a negative P. We also know that pressure acts equally in all directions. 
in the normal directions. Pressure doesn't act in shear, it acts in the normal directions. And so the way in which we can convey that information is by multiplying it by a special tensor, the identity tensor, which has a 1 on the principal diagonal in each uh, position, but 0 elsewhere. And we remember the principal diagonal is to do with normal stresses, and the upper and lower triangular sections are to do with shear stresses. So 0 in the shear positions means that there is no shear contribution from pressure, which there isn't. 1's on the principal diagonal means that the pressure acts in a normal direction on each face, and minus says it acts in compression. So there we go, total stress sigma is minus P times identity tensor, you'll see this written as non-italic bold I, plus tau. Rank homogeneity is obeyed. Rule 3. Symmetry. Let's write our summation out in longhand. Sigma on the left hand side, my total stress is minus P times identity tensor. We can see the identity tensor is indeed symmetric. It has one in each position on the principal diagonal. Plus mu times gamma dot. And we've already seen from our previous part of this lecture that we've defined gamma dot, our rate of strain tensor, to obey symmetry. So that too is symmetric. So this sum is symmetric, so we can be pretty happy about that. So there we have it. There's my total stress. It's minus p, little p here is scalar, times i, i is my identity tensor, plus mu, notice mu as well is a scalar, times gamma dot, my rate of strain tensor. And this is dimensionally consistent, it's rank consistent, and it's symmetric. Now, you will recall from other fluid mechanics courses that you've studied in the past, that we can use that definition of sigma, my total stress, in a force and momentum balance, which I've written on the blackboard there, the rate of change of momentum on the left-hand side is equal to forces that give rise to change of momentum on the right-hand side, and of course if we work these two equations through, you end up with the Navier-Stokes equations. So let's recap some key points. Expressions that sum to stress have three rules. Rule number one, every term must be dimensionally consistent. Every equation that adds together has to have terms that are dimensionally consistent. Rule number two, every term that adds together has to be rank consistent. You can't add scalars to vectors to tensors without ensuring there's a means of doing it correctly. Rule number three, the result must be symmetric.